All right, today we're going to talk about nuclear energy. This is one that they ask a lot about on the AP exam, so I want to make sure that you guys know it. Um, just like how we talked about, I'm going to flip this page for a second. We talked about a power plant, how any type of power plant works, and we talked about um, the turbine. Oops, sorry about that. Turbine and the generator, All right? So we said it generates something is heated up, right? It's burned. We generate steam. And then there's a turbine and a generator. Same thing happens here with nuclear power. We're just using nuclear energy instead of like coal or chemical energy and coal or oil or something like that to produce the heat. So nuclear energy is produced from uranium. Anyone remember anything else that's produced by uranium that might seep in underground into buildings in their basements? So radon, radon is produced from uranium, naturally produced from uranium. So fission, produced from uranium through fission. Fission is when we split a nucleus in half. So we split an atom in half. You can kind of see that down here. Basically, we fire a neutron at a uranium. So if you remember back from like eighth grade chemistry, a neutron usually lives inside of an atom, and it's a neutral particle. It's not positive or negative. We fire that at a high speed towards the uranium um, atom, and it causes it to split in half. So it splits in half. And when it splits in half, it releases energy. And that energy is in the form of radioactivity or radioactive energy. So that's why we call it nuclear is because it has to do with splitting the nucleus of an atom. So when we split this atom, it releases lots and lots of heat. So notice there's energy coming off. A lot of that energy is in the form of heat. And that heat then is used to produce steam, to heat up the water, boil it, and turn the turbine. So splitting the atom generates heat, and then that heat is used to create steam. You'll notice down here, this is a picture of a nuclear power plant. These are all the big cooling towers. So it produces way more heat than the rest of different types of, than other types of power plants. So um, when it produces that heat, it needs to be cooled down so it doesn't overheat. And we have these big cooling towers that help do that. It produces, so one of the problems is that it produces waste though. So it also, in addition to heat, produces radioactive um, energy. So think of like x-rays, right? That's an example of radioactivity. And x-rays, when you go to the dentist and you get an x-ray or you go to the doctor and get an x-ray, it's um, really tough to stop those x-rays. It's hard to figure them out because you can't see them, can't feel them, but they're there. Um, and so you guys wear that little lead vest when you go to the dentist, when you get your x-rays. Lead stops radioactive waves. It prevents them from going through, but they can pretty much go through anything else. Um, so that's one of the problems is how do we store this waste if it can go through so many different materials? And remember when we're talking about radioactivity or radioactive stuff, we're talking about half-lives, right? Um, they usually always have a problem of half-life on the multiple choice part of the AP exam, at least one question. So when we talk about half-lives, half-life is the amount of time it takes to get to half. So maybe the half-life is 5,000 years, meaning if I start with 100, it will take me 5,000 years to get to 50. So 5,000 is the half-life, okay? So let's look a little bit more at these power plants. So here's the process, okay? First of all, we've got uranium and we process it into little tiny pellets. Little, they look kind of like bricks, but they're small. Um, and these pellets go into these fuel rods. So the fuel rods are here, the little purple things. And this is where the reaction is going to happen. So these pellets are put in these rods and the reaction kind of happens automatically. But um, they shoot neutrons in there and then they cause the atoms to split. So the uranium atoms split and that generates heat. So the heat from this reaction heats up this water. So here's our water. It's going to generate steam. And then this steam then turns the turbine and creates electricity through the generator. You'll notice down here, condenser cooling water. This is why we have to have those big cooling towers. 
okay? Those big cooling towers are going to cool down the equipment so that it can be used again, because if this equipment gets too hot, um, everything ends up failing. So this is an inside if you, uh, picture of those um, control rods in the core, um, but obviously this has to be very well managed because if it's not, all of that radioactive uh, material can escape and then, you know, we've got issues of, um, you know, cancer and other uh, radioactive health effects. So if you want to take a look at where we have nuclear power plants, we actually have three in Wisconsin. They used to be, um, people thought about 10, 15, 20 years ago that they were going to be like the future. And they've actually kind of declined in popularity. Um, and one of the reasons is the public is very concerned about what happens if a nuclear power plant fails. Because all that radioactivity gets out. We can't see it. We can't taste it. We can't touch it. But it's there. And it's all ultimately causing um, our DNA to be damaged, um, which leads typically to cancer. So here are some advantages. It doesn't produce any air pollution. So keep in mind, these are all non-renewable sources of energy, okay? Nuclear is not renewable um, because we only have a limited supply of uranium. You can reuse it, but we're still classifying it as non-renewable. So it produces no air pollution. The problem though, nuclear accidents. There's already been several uh, nuclear power plants that have failed um, and have had, have had huge issues. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but basically it can uh, harm human <laughs> populations pretty easily. All right, how do we dispose of the waste? So once we use this radioactive material, it's still radioactive. The uranium is still radioactive, but how do we dispose of it? Um, up here we see a comic uh, it says one day son this will be yours and it's all of this nuclear waste um, so even though it doesn't emit air pollution we're still creating waste um, sometimes they uh, store the waste in really deep lead lined basically containment centers so that's kind of what you see here this is aligned with like lead and a bunch of other materials that won't let any of that radioactivity seep through it um, and then they bury them in the ground. Security. So what if somebody from a different country, what if terrorists get a hold of our nuclear waste? What if they find it? And then what if they release it purposefully to get back at the United States? Um, so how do we make sure it's secure and that bad people can't get a hold of it? And then the last, which they like to ask a lot about, so put a star by this one, Thermal pollution, it releases a lot, a lot of heat, more so than any other type of non-renewable energy. Um, and so when they build cooling towers next to streams and lakes, a lot of times the temperature of those streams and lakes increases. So the thermal pollution, that temperature rise, um, is a big deal. So there's been a couple nuclear power plant accidents. So in 1986, in Ukraine, so Ukraine's up by Russia, there was a nuclear power plant and it overheated, which is really common. Um, so when it overheats, uh, things start to break down and uh, it's, it's not good. <laughs> so it overheated, leading to an explosion and then a fire. So all of that radioactivity that was contained in there, if that building is exploding, chances are that radioactivity is going to be released. So 31 workers and firefighters died. So you can die from radiation. So if there's too strong of radiation, you end up dying. You can also get burned. And then more ended up dying later. Um, so I have a link here that I'm just going to show you really quickly. This is a journalist that went into um, Chernobyl, the place, where, the city where this um, happened. And he went in 30 years later and he took pictures. Now, here's the deal. Radioactivity is still there. It's still radioactive there. Um, and so nobody lives there. You can't live there. The radioactivity is um, in the soil. It's in uh, all of the buildings. So how do you clean out radioactivity? You can't. Nobody knows. So we're going to take a look. Sorry for all these ads. Um, 
at some of the pictures that he took here. So let's take a look. Um, so here is either, you know, an orphanage or a hospital, and it's completely abandoned. So everything looks the exact same as it was left 30 years ago. Um, nobody can live here because of the radioactivity. You might ask, well, how could this reporter go there if there's still radioactivity in the soil and the walls and the buildings and all of that? Well, it's one of those things where if you go by radioactivity or if you're in radioactivity like once and it's a small amount, you'll probably be fine. If you live there for an extended period of time and you're exposed to that radioactivity on a daily basis, um, you're at a much higher risk. So it's just like uh, if you were to sunbathe. So we know that tanning increases um, your chance of getting skin cancer. It can damage your DNA. If you go out sunbathing once a year, it's probably not going to do a ton. But if you go out sunbathing every single day, then we might have an increased chance of developing some health effects. So you can see here's just a little kid's room, completely abandoned. Um, this is the city. Uh, gas masks, so obviously those wouldn't be super helpful against uh, radiation. So there's a uh, music hall. This is a classroom. I don't know why they have specimens. That must be a science classroom. Control center, a bunch of buses. So as you can see, it's life is just, it's completely dead here. So that, um, just to give you an idea, nobody lives here. Nobody has lived here for 30 years. Nobody will probably be able to live there in the future. We don't have any way of cleaning up these spills. We, um, or they're not really spills, but this radioactivity, we don't know how to get it out of places because it's literally atoms. So it's atoms that are radioactive. This is uh, Fukushima. So this is in Japan. So in 2011, an earthquake triggered a tsunami and the tsunami um, caused a nuclear meltdown. And that's what you call when a nuclear power plant fails. Um, and usually it fails because the uh, coolant is not cooling things properly. And then it overheats and all of the equipment fails and then we get an explosion um, or a fire. So that there's the power plant you can see exploding. And then notice this is the fallout. This is the radioactivity. So after three days, it reached over here to the peninsula of Alaska. Um, six days, it reached the west coast here. Ten days. So even if you don't live in Japan, you're still affected by radioactivity. Now, as it spreads out, it becomes um, less intense and less dangerous. But people all the way to Colorado were still getting radioactivity from this nuclear uh, power plant in Japan. So that's it for nuclear power plants. Um, it, they're pretty clean, but they also have a lot of potential for um, hazardous accidents and then thermal pollution.